Hello, Sarah here, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Tile Palette and Tile Map Editor in Unity. This is going to be a very basic introduction, um, but it should give you the rough idea of how to get how to use it um, and what it can do for you. So the Tile Editor and Tile Map functionality in Unity is for creating backgrounds based on tiles. So that's individual, um, square, small images that are put together to create a background, kind of like what you would see in Mario. So we assume you already have some tiles created. If not, you can get some for free at Kenny Assets. They're very useful. That's what I will be using in my demo today is uh, Kenny Assets. And um, we're going to use those. So uh, the first thing that you will need to do is have a scene to work in. So if you don't already have one, you can create a new scene, call it something like uh, level one or in game or whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create one now. So you can go up to file and do new scene um, and then go ahead and file and save to get it saved to start with and always put your scenes into a folder within your assets, your main Unity assets folder. Um, I have one called scenes already. Um, I have it in a subfolder since I'm doing several different examples here. Uh, so you may not have a subfolder for it. It may just be out in your assets folder. And I'm gonna call mine tutorial background and I'm going to call this one um, tile map. But you should probably call yours something like level one or in game. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that and now I have my scene and you can tell that it's worked because in my hierarchy up here um, I now have tutorial background tile map and the only thing that's in my scene right now is the camera. Uh, so the next order of business is to create our tile palette. So to do that, we need a new window that we don't normally have in Unity by default. And to get that window, we're going to go up to the window menu at the top of the screen and go down and choose 2D and then choose tile palette. Okay, and mine's created off of the side here. I'm gonna bring it back over. So your tile palette will open in a new window. Now I want this window to dock onto Unity and anytime you want to move any of these windows in Unity, you should grab their uh, tab. And by grabbing the tab, it will let you dock it. If you just grab it by the rest of the window, um, you can move it around, but you won't be able to dock it anywhere. I want to dock this so I can easily use it. So I'm going to grab the tab and I'm gonna put it down here. Um, you kind of want a square area and it doesn't have to be super huge uh, to use your tile palette. So I'm going to put it down there. For me, that's a place that works well. You may put it wherever you like. Okay, so I have my tile palette now. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually create, so I have a, a window for my tile palette, I need to now create the palette itself. So on my tile palette window, I'm going to click on create new palette. And that's going to open up this little dialogue here and I'm going to change the name of it. So I'm going to call my uh, palette cave tiles because the tiles that I have in my um, examples are kind of cave like yours may be different. And I'm going to leave the grid as rectangle. Um, don't change that unless you specifically have hexagonal uh, uh, grids or isometric and you don't want, that's much more advanced. We're gonna base this on a very simple set of tiles, kind of like the original Mario for now. And you can also leave your cell size as automatic. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And now that's going to open up a place where it will ask me where I should save this. Um, so, I will save this in a new folder. So I'm going to click on new folder here and I'm going to make a folder to hold all of my tiles because when you start actually creating the individual tiles for this tile palette, there will be a, an extra file for every image that you have a tile of. So we might have a lot of uh, files being created. We need to put them into a folder to keep them nice and tidy. So I'm going to create a folder called tiles and it's inside my assets folder. Um, now I'm gonna put mine into examples because again, I'm using several different examples here. I don't wanna get mixed up with everything else I'm doing, but you wouldn't have that examples folder. It would just be in your assets folder. And I've got a tiles folder there. And now I'm gonna click select folder. I don't need to change a name here um, to the file that I'm saving because I already named it in the dialogue just before this. So I just click select folder when I found the folder where I wanna put it. And this will have now created a uh, 
tiles folder and it will have created a uh, tile palette object inside that folder. Now that we've created our tile palette, we now need to put stuff into it. So we have a palette, just like a painter's palette. If you had a painter and they have, you know, that that funny shaped wooden thing and they have their paints on it, well, we've got the wooden thing with no paints on. So we need to put the paints on. <laughs> so to create the palette that we're going to use to, to paint our world, we need to put what images we want to be using as tiles. So. Um, I have a few different, I have a bunch of images here in my project folder, and there's a few that I specifically want to use as tiles in my tile palette, and that's my, my dirt image, my rock image, and my wall image. So I'm going to go ahead and drag those. Um, I've got them selected. I used control click to select multiple of them at a time, multiple images at once, um, and I'm going to drag them into my tile palette window. And I'm just going to let go once I have done that. Now, it will then pop up a, a window asking you where you want to save this. And we're going to save these images in the same place we just created for the palette itself. And for me, that was in my examples folder in tiles. For you, it should just be in a tiles folder. And once you've done that, click select folder and it will create a file for each of the images you dragged in, a separate file. And that contains the information about how to change that image into a tile. Okay, so now I have three different types of tiles in my tile palette. It's as if I had my wooden thing, my palette, just like a painter has, and it's got three bits of paint on it, but in this case, the three tiles. Okay, that's great. My tile palette is now ready to use. The next thing I need is the actual tile map that I'm going to paint on, because I've got my paints, but I need my canvas where I'm going to paint my masterpiece of a level. So to create the tile map, we need to go up to uh, our game object window because we're going to create a new game object in our scene. And we're going to choose the 2D object and tile map from there. And that will create something. Now it doesn't look like it's done anything, but it has. If you look in your hierarchy, there will now be a grid object. And if I click on that, suddenly there's a grid showing in my scene. Um, but that is not the tile map itself, because you can actually have multiple tile maps on a single grid, which we'll see later. Instead, inside the grid, and you can use this little triangle next to the grid object in the hierarchy to see inside of it, inside of it we have a tile map, and that is where we're actually going to paint our background. Okay, now to the good part. How do we paint this? So we're going to go down to our tile palette, and we're going to select whatever... Um, type of tile we want to paint. I'm going to paint this uh, dirt one for now. And I'm going to select um, the uh, brush tool, which I think was actually selected by default there. And I'm going to paint, and if I bring my mouse now over to the scene, you can see there's actually now um, a, a tile following my mouse around. And if I just click and drag, suddenly I will be dropping uh, tiles everywhere. And I can just paint this scene. Now, this is all great, but there's a minor problem, which you can probably see right away, and that is that my tiles are not the right size. They're not connecting to the edges of the grid properly. So how do we fix this? Well, it's because my images are not set up correctly. One grid space in Unity is one unit. And when we import our, pic our uh, images, we can choose how many pixels per unit that image has, what the setting is for it. So how big will it be when we put it into Unity? In order to make our tiles work properly, we need to have them imported so that uh, the amount of pixels per unit is equal to the actual size of the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my uh, images and I'm gonna just go ahead and select them all because for me, these images are all the same size. And that is something that if your images are not all the same size, and if they're not square, I would recommend going and changing that um, in your actual image editing program, whatever you use to create the image, whether it was Piskel or Photoshop or whatever, I would recommend changing that because it will just make your life a lot easier. You can do tiles that are different sized uh, in Unity, but it's more complicated. And as a beginner, I would definitely recommend to use um, your tiles all the exact same size and have them be square. So 
my tiles are all the same size and they are all square. They're all 100 by 100. Now, I cheated a little bit here because by default, Unity actually does 100 pixels per unit. So these would have looked fine, but for most of you, yours wouldn't look fine. So before we started, I changed mine to be 150. So it's actually wrong right now, just like yours probably is. I'm now going to change mine to be 100, but yours might need to change to be, for example, 64 or 32, however big your actual image is. And if you're not sure how big your image is, on your inspector, down at the bottom, you'll have this preview. Um, and I have mine closed most of the time by default because it gets, it gets in the way. It's not really necessary. But um, if you look at it, and I have one of the images selected, it actually says in that preview window down the bottom left corner of the window, it says 100 by 100. And that's the pixel size of that image. So if I want uh, my images to be imported at that setting, that's the number you want to look for. So yours might say 64 by 64, 32 by 32, or some other number. You want to use that same number for your tile size. So I'm going to go ahead and select all my, my rock, my wall, and my dirt, and I'm going to change the pixels per unit in their uh, inspector when I have them selected to 100. And then I'm going to hit apply. And when I do that, you'll see immediately in the scene, my tiles are all the right size now. So this is great. Now, one thing that I didn't make particularly clear, and I want to make sure is really clear. What I selected there was the images the images, not the tiles that were created. So I did not go to the tiles folder in my project. I went to the graphics folder where I have the images that the tiles are using because that's what actually needs to change. Okay, so now I have my tiles being all the right size and they look great. So the next thing to do is to experiment a bit with the other tools that are here. So we also have a square tool. So I can click on a, let's say a different tile here and I can do this um, square tool. And if I now click, I can make a square so I can fill in large areas using that. It's very useful or I can create little platforms. I have an eraser or I can go through and erase things that I already have. So uh, I can also use the eyedropper to select uh, one of the tiles that are, is in the scene. Now that's a little bit silly with only having three tiles. It's quite easy to choose what I want. But if you have a lot of tiles and it's hard to find which one you used before, you can use the eyedropper to uh, find it. And then um, there's also a fill tool, but be careful with that one because it can make a big mess, just like fill tools always can. And there is a move tool. Um, but you need to select things first and then you can use the move tool to move them. Uh, it's a little bit uh, awkward to use, but you can do it. Okay, so try those tools out, see how they work for you, but I'm not gonna have you stop here and have a go at this yet because I don't want you to waste a bunch of time because we have a couple more things to talk about. So first of all is collision. So say I want to add collision to this tile map. And actually I'm going to go ahead and add um, some of these blocks here as well. So say I want to add collision to this tile map. So if I click on my tile map in the hierarchy and I go down to the inspector for that tile map and I choose add component and type in tile. You'll see there's a few special tile components and the one we're interested in is the tile map collider 2D. So I put in the tile map collider 2D. Suddenly in my scene, you can see that all of my tiles have that green outline that indicates they have a collider on them. And this will allow the player to run into them, which is great um, because it's what you usually want with your environment in your game. You want the player to be able to run into it. So that's really, really good. And it's very, very easy to make a level then because your, your tiles automatically have collision, which is fantastic. However, Say I only wanted the brick tiles to have collision. Unfortunately, you can't do that. Uh, you can't just say only these ones will have a collision. So our solution is to create two separate tile maps. So I'm going to delete my tile map collider 2D and I am going to add, uh, I'm going to remove all of the bricks that I just put down here, like so. And I'm going to add another tile map. So the way to add another tile map on the same grid as the one you were just using 
is to right click on the grid object. Remember that's in the hierarchy and it's the parent object to your tile map. So if you right click on the grid object, you can go down to 2D object and tile map. And now I've got tile map and tile map one. So tile map with no one is the one I had before. And I'm gonna call that, I'm gonna rename it because what you need to make sure you do if you have two different tile maps, you need to rename them so they're really clear which is which. So one of my tile map is gonna be the background elements. They're not gonna be uh, have any collision on them. And one of them will be the walls and it will have collision. So if I change the first one to be, uh, we're gonna rename it as background. And if I change the second one and rename it and call it walls, then it's really clear which is which. Now for the second tile map, I'm going to go ahead and add a component to it. And that'll be my tile map collider 2D. Make sure you remove the tile map collider 2D from your background. So now you have one with a, a collider and one without. So if I then click on my walls, I can now draw uh, my uh, bricks back on here and you can see that they've got a collision. Now you may notice that my, my bricks drew behind these other tiles. If you don't want, if you want to make sure one of your tile maps always draws in front of the other, you should click on that tile map that you want to draw at a closer to the player distance and you should go to its tile map renderer. So renderers in Unity means things that draw to the screen that make your images and your uh, visuals for your game come to life. All of your sprites in the game have sprite renderers. Tile maps have a special one called a tile map renderer. So in the tile map renderer, you see that you have an order in layer. And if you change that order in layer to be a higher number, you'll notice that the bricks now draw closer to us. So a higher number means closer to the player, which means be visible whereas a lower number means it will be behind things, okay? So that is how the order and layer works. You can use your background and your walls in that way. You can also use the sorting layer, but really both of these two things should be the same sorting layer, which would be background, um, but you can change that, or maybe you would want your walls to be gameplay and your uh, background to be background. It's up to you, but um, the background will be drawn behind and the gameplay will be drawn in front. That's our tile map essentially ready for testing. It's not the greatest map in the world that I've created here, but I'm sure you can create something much better. Um, all you need to do now is put your player into the scene, make sure your player has some collision on them and test them out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I've got a player that I created before in my prefabs folder. And I'm going to drag them in. Oh, now I can see that my player, <laughs> When I dragged them in there, you could see I still have this um, uh, brick on my uh, mouse. So I'm going to go back up and choose at, at the top uh, left of your screen where you've got your uh, tools. I'm going to click away from the painting brush and choose my move tool instead. And now if I drag my um, my player into the scene, uh, it won't look quite so strange. It's still not dragging very well, so I'm going to just drag them into the hierarchy, and that worked fine. So there's my player up there. Now, if I drag my player down here and I give the player, this is important, my player does not have a collider by default. So I'm going to give the player a capsule collider. I recommend capsule collider 2D for your player. Make sure you use a 2D collider because the collision system in Unity, there's a 3D and a 2D version. They do not talk to each other. So if you use a normal capsule collider, that's a 3D collision system it will not be able to collide with your tile mouse. You need to make sure you use the 2D version. So put a capsule collider on my player. And if I press play right now, my player will be able to run into the walls. Now you notice my player is rolling around a little bit, um, which is not ideal. So to fix that, I can change the uh, rigid body constraints for my players. If I go to rigid body, click on constraints and choose freeze rotation and press play again, my player should no longer spin like crazy um, and they will correctly run into things. Now they are going behind the uh, wall there and I can easily fix that by clicking on my player and changing either their sorting layer or their ordering layer in order for them to be in front. So I'm gonna change their uh, sorting layer to be gameplay because I already have a gameplay layer set up. And if I do that, they'll now draw in front of things. 
Um, but you can also use order and layer the same way that we did earlier. So this collision seems to be working for me. Hopefully you were able to get yours working as well. Um, this will let you do, uh, do a lot of really exciting and flexible things with Unity's tile map editor. There's way more to this editor than what I've shown you here. You can do hexagon tiles. You can do tiles of different sizes. You can uh, do animated tiles, but those are all much more advanced features. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend uh, using what you've seen here for a while first and getting used to it before diving in to the more advanced types of tiles. Hopefully that was useful. Um, there are a few other video tutorials with this one that will show you how to do other types of game environments. Um, so take a look at those if you want more information. Thank you for watching.